Now, in this lecture, we're going to talk about what is state in React. State is one of the most important concept in React application. State is an instance of the React class and it is used to control the behavior of the component. State holds the component data that may change the component behavior. State is nothing but a simple plain JavaScript object. To understand how state is useful in React application and how you can use it in your component, let's take a look at a very simple example of state. As you know, in the previous example, we just added a simple tick function and inside it, we add this react dom method to update the component on every one second. We use this set interval function to execute this tick function after every one second. And using this react dom render method, we updated the UI after every one second. But there is a better way to do the same thing with state. As I said earlier, most react apps only call a react dom render method once. So instead of react dom, we can use state here. So let's take a look at a very simple example to create a clock using state. So let's create a new component for the clock. So inside this component folder, here I'm going to create a new file and name this file clock.js. You can specify any name to this file, that, that doesn't matter. Inside this file, I'm going to create a functional clock component. So I'm going to see here react functional component. So I'm going to just say RFC. When I press tab, I'm going to have a functional clock component. Inside this return, here to this div, I'm going to specify class. Class name is going to be app. And then I'm going to return here h2 heading tag. And inside it, I'm going to pass curly braces to add JavaScript. So here I'm going to pass property to this functional component using props parameter. So I'm going to use here props. And I'm going to say here props dot date. I'm going to specify value to this date variable or you can say I'm going to specify value to this date property when we call this clock component. But just for now, I'm going to specify here date and call a method of this date property. So I'm going to say here date dot to local local time string. When I specify value to this date property, I'm going to specify date object. So using that date object, I can access this to local time string method. Save the changes back to the user.js. Right now, I'm going to leave this render method as it is. And let me show you how you can create this clock using properties. And just up here, let me first import this React DOM. As you know, I don't have this import statement of this React DOM. Otherwise, I'm going to get an error message. So I'm going to say here, import React DOM. As I said earlier, in React, you can reuse your component. So as you know, I have this clock component here, which I can reuse. So inside this user, here I'm going to say, import clock from and in the single quote i'm going to specify dot forward slash and pass my clock.js here so now i can use this clock component inside my user component so what i'm going to do is inside this tick function instead of this constant here i'm going to get rid of this constant statement and i'm going to simply say here clock and just close this clock component like this and as you know i have property to this clock component which is date let me pass this property value here to this clock. I'm going to specify date is equal to in the curly braces. I'm going to pass new date. I'm going to pass a new date object to this date property. So this value is going to pass to this date property. And I'm going to call a method of date object to local time string. That's easy to understand, right? Now, once I've done that, let me just call here a tick method inside this curly braces. Here I'm going to call tick like this and then just down here i'm going to simply call set interval and call here tick and pass 1000 to execute this function after every one second let me save the changes let me save the changes back to the index.js and let me change this component as you know i have selected here user class let me select here user change this path as well i'm going to select the user and change this component name as well I'm going to get rid of this property because I don't have any property to this user. Let me save the changes. Oops, I think I misspelled something here. Element is not defined. Element is not defined in this user component. So instead of specifying this component here, let me just specify that instead of this element like this. So this render method is going to render this component. Let me save the changes. To local time string is not a function. Yes, I just misspelled the spelling of this function. Let me just change it to local time string. Let me save the changes. And as you can see, I have my clock here. Now, as you can see, I have my clock using a property. 
Now let me just convert this complete example and show you how you can use state instead of using this property. And I also going to show you how you can remove this react dom render method and get the same result. So let me just show you how you can do it. So right now instead of functional component, I'm going to use here class component. Using state, it's super easy to create this example. So let's convert this example and use state here. So let's convert this functional component into class component. Of course, we can use state in the functional component as well. But for now, let's create a class component because it's easy to understand the state with class component. So let me get rid of this code. So I'm going to say here react class component. So I'm going to just press RCC and I press tab. I'm going to have a simple class component. Now what I'm going to do is here inside this div, I'm going to simply pass class name, which is app. Then inside this div, here I'm going to add h2 heading tag with this is and then pass parenthesis. I'm going to pass state here after a few seconds. But just for now, let me show you how to create a state inside a class component. So just up here, I'm going to just add a constructor of this component. So I'm going to simply add here a constructor and then pass props to it. As you know, using these props, you can access the properties of your component. So I'm going to pass here props as a parameter to this constructor. Then I'm going to call here super and then pass here props. This method is used to call a parent constructor. So I'm going to call here super and pass the properties of this component to the parent using this statement. Just like that inside this constructor, I'm going to create a state. So to create a state, I'm going to say here this dot state and then I'm going to pass equal to sign and pass object. State is a type of object. So I'm going to pass here curly braces. Now you can notice here to create a state, I use this keyword. It means, it means this is a property of this component and I'm going to initialize this state property with object. Now inside this object, I'm going to pass key and value. So here I'm going to say date and specify value to it. I'm going to pass new date. I'm going to create a new date object and pass that value to this date key. So this is how you can create a state in a class component. Now just out of that, let me just use this state and display it. So inside this curly braces, here I'm going to say this dot state dot date. You can notice here I use here this. This is refers to the current object. Then I'm going to call this state property and then I'm going to call this date key. And just out of that, I'm going to call a method of the state which is to local time string like this. To get the local time, I'm using this method. Just for that, I'm going to create a new method here inside this clock component. I'm going to use that method to specify new value to the state object. So here I'm going to create a new method, tick and pass here this dot set state method. The set state method is going to specify new value to the state property. So inside this set state, I'm going to pass an object and here I can change the value of the state. So now here I'm going to say date and pass a new date like this. Now whenever I call this tick method, this method is going to reinitialize this state property and change the value of this date key. So using this set state, I'm going to specify a new value to this state and this will automatically update the UI as well. So when you call this set state, it automatically update the UI and change the value of your date property. At the end, just up here. I'm going to call a react hook called component date mount. We'll look at how react hook work in detail in the future lectures. But just for now, just understand when the component is mounted, this method is automatically executed. React will automatically call this method when the component is mounted in the UI. And inside it, I'm going to just call this dot timer id is equal to and here I'm going to say set interval. And then I'm going to pass here a function like this. And then I'm going to call here this dot tick. And then pass a second parameter timeout, which is 1000. So this set interval is going to execute this tick method after every one second. Let me save the changes back to my user. Get rid of this set interval as well as this tick function. And instead of this tick here, I'm going to simply call my component. So here I'm going to call clock. Let me save the changes back to the browser and as you can see, I'm going to have my timer here as a response. So as you can see, we haven't used react render DOM method in this component to update the UI. Now let me explain this component in detail. 
Here I'm going to first create a component clock and extend it with react component. Then I'm going to call a constructor with props property. As you know, using these props, we can pass value to the component when we call it. Just for that, we call here super method to call the parent constructor and pass the current component properties as a parameter. Just after that, to create a new state, we use here this dot state and initialize this state with this key and value. You can pass any name to this key, that's upon you. Just after that, to update the state, we use here this dot set state method. This method is used to update the value of the state property. So we use here set state and update the date property with new date. And just after that, when the component is mounted in the UI, I'm going to execute this method. And here I'm going to call set interval. And after every one second, I'm going to execute this tick method. So this will just set a new value to the state property of this state. So after every one second, this method is going to execute and pass new value to this date property. And you will get the updated UI on the browser. And as you can see down here, I'm going to use state using this dot state dot date. And then I'm going to call here a method of the date object, which is to local time string. And just like that, in the user, I just call this clock component. That's it. So this is how you can simply create a clock in React class component. When we start working on React hook, I'm going to show you how you can create state in the functional component as well. But just for now, let's take a look at how to work with event in React.